Okay, let's finish implementing the select uh, biome generator. One problem that we have right now is that uh, we are passing in the generate chunk data the X and Z position in chunk coordinates. When we are calling the select biome generator, at the first call, when we are selecting the tree generator, we were passing the data dot world position. Here, we were passing X and Z from the chunk coordinates. So we will need to modify this. So to select our biome generator, we'll need to pass the data dot world position dot x plus the x, and we are going to pass the same for the z uh, with the data dot world position dot z plus z. And now this will be correct. Another thing that we will need to do is also pass to our select biome generator the data itself just in case. So let's pass chunk data data as the uh, second parameter here and now we are going to pass this data here and we are going to pass this data in the select biome generator below as the second parameter okay great sorry about those fixes but now we are ready this position is now in the world space so let's uh, rename it so right click rename and let's call it world position Okay, now we will need we will know that this is the world position. And uh, last thing we did is we have uh, created those biome selection helpers. So the list of those, so those are the biomes that are closest to our position. Now next thing that we will do is since uh, the more biomes that we take for our calculation, the uh, longer it will take, we are going to use only two biomes. Now the problem with this or the benefit of this will be that it will run pretty smoothly and pretty fast but the problem will be that only in some parts of our world so here the transition will be quite smooth let me focus on this part but there will be some points where we are going to have this wall kind of uh, of the terrain so this will not be the smooth transition but still i think it will look pretty nice if we want to take three biome uh, centers to calculate the correct uh, height, so if we want to take three, it will take a bit more time to generate our world. But of course, we can take more of those. So let's go back to our code. And here we are going to have some additional logic. So we are going to select our biome generators, generator one and two. And uh, this will be used, uh, selected by calling select biome method that will take in the index a biome section helper 0 and 1. We are going to take indices of the closest biome and the second closest biome to this position. Let's right click on the select biome and quick actions and generate this method in our, in our class. And this will be our method. Uh, all we need to do is basically select our biome generator using our list of biome data. So we will need to use the temperature threshold, the min and max threshold to select the correct biome. Now for our simple example, it would be easy because we have only two. But for the general uh, case, we want to call float temp biome noise index. So we are going to take the temperature or biome noise for this uh, biome index. And next we are going to check for each data in biome generators data, we are going to check if temp is greater than te data temperature start threshold and temp is uh, so this will be greater equal and temp is less than temperature and threshold then we are going to return this biome uh, this data dot biome train generator now in case we have not found uh, the biome that we want to return we are going to call our biome generator data and we are going to take the zeroth element dot biome train generator and we want to return this so this is just in case we didn't find a temperature that accepts our temp the condition that accepts our temperature. Okay, so this is how we are going to select the concrete biome generator from our list of biome data. Now, we, if we have those two generators, first thing that we want to do is we want to calculate the distance, and this will be the distance between our biome uh, centers and the index of biome one. So this biome. So the closest biome and the biome 2. If we have this distance, then we can calculate the weights which we should use to calculate the terrain height. 
So weight zero will be simply our distance of the point to our biome. So this will be zero. And weight of the second generator will be one minus the weight zero. So now we will know exactly uh, how uh, much of each uh, terrain height we should take into calculation. Now we need to calculate those terrain height noise from for uh, generator one and generator two. To use this, we need to call generator one and we need to call get surface height noise passing the position x, position z, and chunk data. So in our case, this is the data dot chunk height. Now we have this method, but it is currently private. So let's go to our Bion generator. Let's right click and go to the definition. And if we slide it down, we are going to find this get surface height noise that takes x, x, z, and chunk height. Let's make it into a public method. Okay. So now if we go back, we will see that we can pass the position x and position z to, to this. And we will uh, and our position doesn't exist between because we have this world position. So let's pass world position dot x and world position dot z. Okay, so we have calculated the terrain height using the generator one and generator two, and all we need to do is return a new biome generator selector uh, selection, which takes in the generator and the int value of the terrain surface, which can be null. And we are going to pass the first generator, so the closest one to this position, as well as the height. And the height will be calculated by calling mathf.round to int. And we are going to multiply the weight of zero by the terrain height noise zero plus terrain height noise one times weight, weight one. So this should give us the average noise, uh, height of the terrain between those two points, the generator one and generator two. For the biome centers. So now we have this. Above, we were calling this select, uh, select biome generator method for creating the tree data, but here we are going to call it again to get the generator for this specific giant column. So this is the generator that we are going to use to process this column. Now we need to call this biome selection and select this biome generator dot process chunk column. But we are not taking into account the terrain height that, uh, that we have calculated here and saved uh, inside our biome generator selection. So we need to pass it in our generate chunk data, biome selection, biome generator process chunk column, and we are going to call this biome selection and pass as the next parameter for this process chunk column dot, and we are going to pass the uh, terrain surface noise. Okay, let's go right click on this and go to the definition. And we are going to find out that we do not have this parameter as an argument. So let's add int with the question mark. So this can be null. And this is terrain height noise. Okay, and let's uh, use it. Right now, we are always calculating the int grounded position using get surface height noise. So what we are going to do is we are going to create an if statement if our terrain height noise dot has a value equals false if this doesn't have any value we are going to call ground position is again equal to get surface height noise and we are going to use this biome uh, this uh, biome generator to calculate this else we are going to set the ground position to be terrain height noise dot value and this will take the value that is the interpolated value that we have calculated using our biome selection. And that's it for the changes that we need to introduce to our project to have different biomes selected. Let's save it, uh, file and save all just in case. And let's go back to Unity. Okay, we shouldn't have any errors. Everything should be assigned now uh, in our terrain generator. Let's see. Everything seems to be assigned. In our world, I have selected the chunk uh, size to be 16 and chunk drawing range to be 8. So now let's save our uh, scene and let's press play. Okay, regenerate. And now we should see that our world should contain two biomes. And as you can see, here it is. Now, it is a straight line, so something didn't work as expected in, in our biome uh, generator. As you can see, um, there are some um, 
the line isn't exactly straight but we have i think uh, to modify our um domain warping but basically this is what we were uh creating now we still have some issue with the water we will we would have to fix this uh, part to always generate a bit higher uh, level of ground when we are near the water but basically this is it so let's stop this i think we can select our terrain generator and let's set the amplitude x and y to something like 70 or maybe 50 and 30 okay let's press play and let's see if it helps our towards our generation okay and i think that now our uh, biomes were a bit differently generated let's try moving around our map and see if we can generate a bit more okay here it is and as you can see our desert should look a bit better now we have our sand that is uh, underneath our water but basically here is our line and it is a bit more jagged a bit more meandering instead of this straight line and basically we need to tweak our noise values and uh, tweak this uh, to get a better result but as you can see we have generated a different biome inside the same terrain map and this is empty because we have no trees or nothing else here and you can of course modify the uh, noise values for this terrain to have uh, lower mountains or higher mountains and so on let me enable flying and let's see if we can reach another green area here okay it was pretty long flight but now we have another green area and of course again it is all about tweaking those parameters to get a bit better result or different result but basically we have achieved two different biomes on our map using a pretty simple system as, as you can see those blue points are moving because we are recalculating those points every time we are loading new chunks in our map okay thank you very much for watching this series thank you to all the patrons that are financially supporting me for me to be able to make those tutorials if you're interested in learning a bit more about unity you can check out my video courses the link will be in the description of this video okay see you in my future tutorials take care